Uh, were you all ready? Amen. Apostle is ready to continue preaching about faith, <laughs> love, and grace. Amen. Apostle, come on. Hallelujah! <laughs> it's working. It's working. <laughs> love, you, love you too. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, all right. Put your hands up. Say, I say to you, Papa. Say to you, Papa. To you, Jesus. To you, Holy Ghost. Ghost. 999 thousands, thousands, millions, millions, billions, 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 trillions, trillions, quadrillions, quadrillions, sextillions, septillions, Googles, Googles, zentrillions, Googleplexes. Hallelujahs. Thank yous. yous. And I love you, you. Papa, Papa, Jesus, Jesus. and Holy Holy Ghost. Let's give the Lord a hand. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Hallelujah. So uh, somebody already tempted me this this afternoon or this evening. He says, you got to say a you got to say a man joke. He said, you said Cuban jokes. I says, oh, come on, man. But if I say a man joke, then I got to say a woman joke, just to pair it off. How many want to hear a joke? Just marry hard. So this man calls uh, uh, the pastor and says, Pastor, I think my wife is trying to poison me. He says, what are you talking about? I said, I think my wife is trying to poison me. He says, oh, come on. He says, look. I'll call her, and I'll call you back in three hours. So three hours later, the pastor calls the the brother and says, the brother says, hey, pastor, how you doing? He says, did you talk to my wife? He says, yep, I talked to to your wife. Talked to her for about two and a half hours. So what what do you think? He says, drink the poison. (laughs) (laughs) I told you that was a man's joke. I said that was a man's joke. Here, here comes a women joke. <laughs> Balance. 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 <laughs> so this man, he's, uh, he's sick, so his wife takes him to the hospital. I mean, he takes him to the doctor, and the doctor checks him out. He says, look, wait for me outside. I got to talk to your wife. So he, takes, uh, he goes outside, and the wife comes and says, look, here's a paper and pencil. Your husband's pretty sick. And I don't know how long he has, but maybe... Uh, you do these things, maybe you prolong his life, and who knows, you may save him. Oh, yeah, okay, Doc. What do you want me to do? Right right here. Number one, no arguing or screaming at him. Write it down. (laughs) The guy cannot do nothing around the house no more, (laughs) including taking out trash. (laughs) You got to give him all the love that that he wants. Write it down. And he goes down this long list, right? So on the way home, the lady's driving, and the husband says, so what did the doctor say? He says, you're going to die. (laughs) (laughs) All right. That's it. (laughs) All right. If you got your Bibles with you. (laughs) If <laughs> you got your Bibles with you, Luke 17. Let's get spiritual. <laughs> Luke chapter 17. <laughs> Thank you, Papa. Luke 17, verse 3 says, take heed to yourself. Luke 17, 3 says, take heed for yourself. If your brother sins against you, rebuke him. And if you repent, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times a day, seven times a day return and returns to you seven times, uh, and seven times a day he returns to you saying, I repent, you shall forgive him. 
Verse 5. And the apostle said to the Lord, increase our faith. <laughs> so the Lord said, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, be pulled up by the roots and be planted in the, in, in the sea, and it would obey you. And which of you, having a servant, plowing or tending sheep, will say to him when he has come in from the field, come at once and sit down to eat. But he would not rather say to him, prepare something for my supper and girl yourself and serve me till I have eaten and drunken and afterward you will eat and drink. Papa, I thank you for your word. I thank you, Lord God, even now, Lord Holy Spirit, for coming and speaking to our hearts, giving us eyes to see, ears to hear, a mind to understand and a heart to believe and receive your word. Thank you right now, Holy Spirit, for glorifying the Father, revealing Jesus to us, edifying the church. Have your way with us, Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. and amen. Now, the last times that we've been together, we talked about how faith worketh by love. Remember that? Faith worketh by love, Galatians chapter 5, verse 6. And we saw that if we're going to operate in faith, because it is faith that gives us access to the, uh, to the, the, the grace of God and to the presence of God, we got to be convinced how much God loves us. Totally convinced that we are totally loved by God. Then we saw how there's two kinds of faith. There's the faith that God has given every human being, and then there's the faith of Christ, and that's the faith that we're supposed to have in, the faith of Christ, because Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega. He's the author and finisher of our faith. We can trust that he has completed a complete work on our behalf. Then we saw, I believe last time we were together, that faith is the substance of the things hoped for. And we saw the importance of knowing how hope operates because faith comes behind hope to obtain those things that, that we need and we want and we desire or that God puts inside our hearts. Then we finish it up with was that we're to come into the awareness of knowing. We saw that knowing is owing. Owning. When you know something, nobody can take that away from you. <clears throat> and we looked it into that. Now today, I want to look at this from a different point of view because all right, Jesus has completely done everything for us. But we're still to walk by faith. And here in uh, Luke chapter 17, we see how the apostles were told by Jesus all right, that if, they, if, they, if someone offended them, they're to forgive them. And if they, somebody offended them seven times, uh, uh, a day they're, for, they're supposed to forgive them seven times 70 and suddenly the, apost the disciples says Lord increase our faith and, and Jesus automatically went into all right, he didn't just speak this in fact this kind of scripture as if you have the faith of a mustard seed you could find it all right, four times in the gospel and one time in the epistle and he goes on to tell them how faith operates. But many times we read that, and then when it comes to, when it comes to verse, when it comes to verse, uh, uh, we read 5 and 6, and we stop there, and we stop reading 7, 8, and 9, <coughs> thinking that Jesus had finished his speech at 6, not knowing that he had something further to say when he was telling them how to operate in faith. And what, he, what Jesus was trying to get across to us is that faith oper is to operate in our lives as a servant. We serve God, faith serves us. We serve God as we hear and obey and believe, and then we use the faith that God has given a measure to in our lives to now to bring to pass those things that God has commanded us to do. 
So often we have overlooked the scripture. We've read it. All right. We read 17, 5, and 6. <coughs> but then we stop there and we don't read 7, 8, and 9. Now we must understand that we are surrounded by spiritual forces. Folks, listen, we live in a very natural world, but we also live in a very spiritual world. Amen. There are spiritual forces all around us. For example, go with me if you would to go with me if you would to Matthew chapter Matthew chapter 21. Matthew chapter 21. Thank you, my brother. What a guy. When's your birthday? February 29th. <laughs> oh, 31st. <laughs> Boy, I'm telling you, you guys are quick. <laughs> you guys are real quick. <laughs> Go with me a minute to Matthew 21, verse 16. Matthew 21, 16. Verse 14 says, And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. Verse 15. But when the chief priests and scribes saw wonderful things that he did, the children cried in the temple, saying, Hosanna, the Son of God. And they were indignant. And he said to, and Anne said to him, do you hear what these are saying? And he said to them, yes. Have you not read out of the mouth of babes and, nurse, and nursing infants you have perfected praise? He says, okay. So what does that mean? Well, to get the, to get the revelation of what this means, you got to go with me a minute to Psalms chapter 8. <coughs> Psalms chapter 8. Psalms chapter 8 enlightens you in what Jesus was saying. Because Jesus turned it around a little bit, all right? And notice what it says in Psalms chapter 8. He says, you have perfected praise. Look how he said it in Psalms chapter 8. Psalms 8.1 says, How excellent is your name, o, o Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth, who have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you have ordained strength because of your enemies, that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. Which translates, when you worship and you praise God, you release a spiritual power that str brings strength and it causes and it steals the avengers and the enemies of your soul. So there's the power of, there's the power of, of praise and worship that we're to utilize constantly. I know that I get in, in my car and home, you know, there's certain songs that really inspire me and I, I tell you, I burn them out. I burn them out a yes. hundred, two hundred, three hundred times. Just turn it on there. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Just let it roar you know, and rip it. And it just it, it strengthens me because, in, you know, did, did you realize that when you were worshiping here tonight, yes. problems disappear? Yes. Everything, weaknesses goes away. You see, in the presence of God, there's nothing negative and nothing that is not of God that could come in. So when you understand the power of praise, the spiritual force of praise, it's for your advantage. As I will show you how faith works, all right, but faith is not the only power. There's a lot of other power. Go with me a minute to Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. Verse 8 says this. 
whatever city you enter and they receive you, eat, 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 eat things that are set before you. Let me, I, let me go back. It says, verse 5, whatever house you enter, first say peace to this house. And if a son of peace is in there, your peace will rest upon it. If not, it will return to you. Now, does that sound that peace is a spiritual force? Yeah. Absolutely. Peace is something that you release, and peace is something that you could pick up again. The same way that you release worship and praise, and it brings on a manifestation of, of a force of God in our lives, uh, the, 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 the peace of God operates at the same time. I would have to go into other things all right, to explain that a little bit more, but... You have the spiritual force of peace. Okay? You have the spiritual force of peace. Go with me a minute to 2 Corinthians chapter 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, we see another force here. The Apostle Paul says in, he says in verse 1, it is doubtless not proper for me to boast. 12.1, I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. Then he goes on to say in verse 7, lest I shall be exalted above measure by the abundance of revelation, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. Now, we've read that scripture many times, right? But notice that, notice the power of revelation in your life. You can be sitting still right now here, and all of a sudden, the Holy Ghost reveals something to you, and revelation of God, the purpose of revelation, it exalts you. When you get a revelation of a revelation of God, it empowers you and it puts you above, it exalts you. God does not want to hum, give you a revelation and make you humble at the same time. Notice they says, there was a thorn given to me, a messenger of Satan. It didn't say that God gave him that messenger. Why? Because the devil comes, the Bible says, that his sower sows a seed and immediately he comes to take it away. The devil knows the power of the revelation of the word of God. The power of revelation. And it changes hearts. And what comes to my mind right now is, is the young man that was getting ready to graduate. And his father, his father was a victim of fire. And he was very hard. He was disfigured by fire. And, 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 and uh, his father did not go out a lot because every time he went out in public, people would stare, people would laugh, people would mock him and all kinds of stuff, call him monsters and so forth. And this young man all his life had to deal with his father being a monster. And the day came when, when he was going to graduate and his, and his son begged his father not to go to the graduation, being that it was such an important day uh, uh, for him. And he didn't want to deal with people looking and, and people gazing at him and the, and the commentaries and so forth and so on. And as the boy was heading out the door, his uncle's walking in. He says, isn't your father going? He says, no, I asked him to stay because I don't want him to go. And suddenly the uncle decided to tell the truth to that young man. The truth that his father had guarded from that young man all his life. And he says, come here, man. I want to tell you something before you go to graduation. Then you make a decision whether you want your father to go or not. He says, nobody's ever told you this story. But when you were a little kid... You were involved in a house fire, and the whole house was aflame. And your father 
took a blanket straight through the fire like a lion to save you. And while you did not even get scorched by the fire, your father came out of, he came out of that fire disfigured like a monster. And he never told you what happened because he didn't want you even to think of being, being able to feel guilty. And suddenly that young man, the revelation... That his father was not a monster, but was a hero. Yeah. And he ran back inside the house and he knelt down. Knelt down. This is a true story. He knelt down and begged his father for forgiveness and begged him to get dressed and to go to the graduation side by side by him. The power of a revelation can change a life could change an eternity for a person. Yes. That's right. There's the revelation, the spiritual force of love, which is the biggest force on the face, on the, on the face of the earth. Mercy. You see, every single day, you and I have the power to release these forces in our lives. Problem is, is that we're not aware of them. We're not conscious of how these powers are able to operate in our lives on a daily basis. And we don't take advantage of them. Go with me to Mark chapter 11. The Bible says that they had brought, not, not here from Mark, Mark 11, but that they had brought a woman that was caught in adultery and she was brought before Jesus. And they told Jesus she was caught in the very act of adultery. The Bible says that she must be stoned. And Jesus said, he who has no sin, let him throw the first stone. And everybody walked away. The decision that Jesus made not to walk according to the law, but to walk according to grace and mercy and love changed that woman's life. Yes. Yes. Scholar says that that woman that was caught in adultery was Mary Magdalene, that many of you know how her life was transformed. She's the first one that show, showed up on the Resurrection Sunday. Her life, her, her life was a miracle. The power of love and the power of mercy could change people's lives around, your, around you all day long if you know that you have the power to release it. In Mark chapter 11, verse 19 says, And when evening had come, he went out of the city. Let's go back. It says in verse, verse 13, verse 12, Now the next day when they had come out of Bethany, he was hungry, and seen from afar off a fig tree having leaves. <coughs> he went to the sea if perhaps he would find something on it. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. And in response, Jesus said to it, let no one eat fruit from you ever again. And the disciples heard it. Verse 19, when evening come, he went out of the city. Now in the morning when they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, remembering, said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you curse has withered away. So Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God, or have the God kind of faith. For as surely I say to you, 
The whosoever shall say to this mountain, be removed and be cast in the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things that he says will be done, he will have, <coughs> he will have what he says. Therefore, I say to you, whatsoever things you ask when you pray, believe you receive them and you will have them. Here, Jesus gave us a glimpse how faith operates and how faith is made to be the servant of a believer. Jesus knew how to release faith and walk on, and he left the faith working on that fig tree while he went on to attend other areas of his life. The same way that you and I are to use faith as our servant because faith will help us all right, in, er in our everyday life all right, so that we don't have to do everything. Faith will do it for you. Faith will operate on your behalf as a spiritual force to bring the things that are not as if they were, to bring the things that are not into the realities of the now. You could release faith in this area of your life and let it go. You can release faith in this area of your life and let it go. You can release F F faith in this area of your life and let it go. And let faith accomplish those things that it was intended to do. Because it's a reality. It's, it's a spiritual force operating in our lives every single day. And the Bible says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. We're not aware how really, 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 really blessed we are. When the Bible says in Ephesians 1, 3, we have been blessed with every blessing from spirit, from heavenly places. Believe me that I've just mentioned six or seven, in five minutes I've mentioned five or six different forces that are in operation every day of our lives that it doesn't take a rocket scientist to release this thing in every areas of our lives. The Bible says in Jeremiah, another force, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Have you mastered the, the power of joy in your life? Some of us have to get emotional to get joyful. Mm? We got to be pumped up to get joyful. You don't need to be pumped up to get joyful. Joy is already inside of you. <laughs> it's there. <laughs> it's there. And it'll strengthen you. It's there. But if you don't, you know, well, I just don't feel like it. Well, now this is important. And the reason I chose faith, because this is the one that really is, this is the one that really is the one that uh, is better applied, and I'll explain it in a moment, because it involves words coming out of our mouth. And we'll look in a minute in Proverbs, it says we eat the fruit of our mouth. So the law of faith starts with you knowing the things that come out of your mouth. But before we go there, I want to say this. Even though faith is a law, the law of faith and law is a force, there is a greater force here that I must stop and say this a minute because sometimes people will run away with what I say and not apply the greater law, and that's the law of the spirit of life. The law of the spirit of life governs every single other law in our lives. You could have faith to remove that mountain, but God may not want you to remove that mountain. And it's the Spirit of God 
<coughs> that will tell you, leave that alone, boy. Don't waste your time on that. And it governs. I've seen people operate in faith and operate in the power of faith. And God did not want them in that area at all. And they bypass the law of the Spirit to govern and use the law of faith rather than using the law of the Spirit. The law of the Spirit is the grandfather of all spiritual forces and law on this earth. It governs all things. So, let's, let's go back there to, to, let's go back to Mark chapter 11. And let's see what it says here. It says, Have faith in God, for surely I say to you, whosoever. How many whosoever's we have here? Whosoever shall say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart. So, all right, it starts, number one, whosoever says to this mountain, Proverbs, hold your place there. All right, go with me a minute to Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 10. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 20. It says, The tongue of the righteous is choice silver, the heart of the wicked is worth little. The lips of the righteous feeds many, feeds many. Notice what it says in verse 31. It says, the mouth of the righteous brings forth wisdom. Verse 32 says, the lips of the righteous know what is acceptable. It is important. The Bible says in the book of James that if a man learns to bridle his tongue, he is what? Perfect. It is in the learning to govern the tongue that we will perfect those things that have already been given to us by Christ. Go with me a minute to, go with me a minute if you would to Proverbs chapter 11, uh, chapter 12. Proverbs 12, 14 says this. Proverbs 12, 14 says, A man will be satisfied with the good by the fruit of his mouth. By the fruit of his mouth. Proverbs 13, 2 says, Proverbs 13, 2 says, A man shall eat well by the fruit of his mouth. Verse 3. He who guards his mouth, he who gov, uh, guards his mouth preserves his life. See, what well, the problem is, is that many times we don't take account of, of our words. You know, there was, a, there was a time that, you know, I, 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 I live in a, um, I grew up in a cash business. Restaurant is a cash business, so... You know, it was very easy for always dad giving us cash and this and that. And, and I'm the type of guy that I'm always, you know, giving money here, giving money there, and giving money here. My poor wife was, says, okay, give me the paycheck. And uh, I says, man, I would take the rest of my money left in my pocket and give it to her. And says, man, what did you do with it? And uh, you got to give an account. So... If many times we don't take account of our money and somebody asks you a month from now, hey, what did you do? 
You won't know what you did with it. But there are consequences of not knowing what you did with it because if you got a bad habit of not knowing what you, what you do with your money or what you do with your time, you won't, you won't, uh, you won't take advantage of the things made available to it. So what did I start doing? Every single, I did this for three, three whole years. If I spend a quarter, I wrote down I spend a quarter. If I spend a dollar, I literally wrote down a dollar. People said, man, you're ridiculous. Oh, it may be ridiculous to you, but it wasn't ridiculous to me or my wife and family. And then I started seeing the patterns, all right, of what I was doing wrong or what I was doing right. And we need to know that you can praise God all you want. Jesus has died for you all you want. But if you don't learn to govern your mouth, all right, you'll never manifest or you'll never align with the will of God, the perfect will of God for your life. Because the blessings, hey, listen, God wants to release the blessings upon our lives. But so often, <coughs> we release the wrong words in our life, and I want you to say we blow the whole thing. Reminds me of the father, the son that was graduating, and the father had given all his, he had given all his sons uh, cars. He had given them cars. Thank you, brother. <laughs> You have given them cars when they graduated. In this case, this is the younger son. And the father decided that instead of giving the, the son the car in front of everybody, he would give him a Bible. And here came graduation, and the young man was expecting the, he was expecting the car, and the father gave him the Bible. That young man was so mad at his dad that he went many years without talking to his dad. Until one day, in a need that he had, he found that old Bible that his father had given him. And inside that Bible was a $25,000 check. And we do that over and over by the words of our actions because we speak what's in our hearts. And we'll talk about that in a minute, but I want you to see for this moment how important it is for you to understand that many of the, many of the, the, many of the things that are manifested in our lives, especially the negative ones, are the results of the words that have come out of our mouth. Now notice what he says. Let's go back to Mark chapter 11. Mark 11, verse 23. Whosoever shall say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea. So what are you expected to say? Yours is, you're to speak the in desire results. See, there's a problem that we have in Christianity. We run into problems. We're to check in with God. But so often we, we, we tell God about our problems but we don't take the whole word of God in content because even though God will hear you, God will support you, and God is merciful, but he also expects you to grow up and to mature spiritually because he has given you all power and authority and you are to be Christ-like, you're to be like Christ, and you're to do the works of Christ, and that means you need to stand up and speak to the mountain. 
And we can go. Ah, 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 ah. And God will take care of you. But there comes a time that he wants you to grow up. He wants you to mature. He wants you to stand up and be a man, a woman of God and speak to those things. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now notice this. Hold your place there and go with me a minute to Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8 says this. Verse 5, and when Jesus had entered Capernaum, and centurion came to him, pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home sick, paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. And Jesus said, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and says, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but speak the word. My servant will be healed. That was the end Desire, result. My servant will be healed. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say, I say to one, go. And he goes unto another, come. And he comes unto my servant, do this. And he does it. That man knew the power of words. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He knew the power of in desire results. Go with me a minute to... Go with me a minute to Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9. Verse 18. And when he spoke these things to them, behold, a ruler came and worshiped him, saying, My daughter has just died, but come and lay your hands on her, and she will live. What did he say? The end desire result, and she will live. Verse 20, and suddenly a man who had a flow, a, suddenly a woman who had a flow of blood for 20 years came from behind and touched the hem of the garment. For she said to herself, she said to herself, if only I may touch his garment, I shall be made well. I shall be made well. You speak the end desire results. So you ought to watch what you say and, and this ought to revolutionize your prayer life. Because let me say this. We're, at, we're to ask petitions of God, especially when we have no wisdom and we don't know on the matter. There are times that you got to come to Papa and say, Papa, I don't know nothing. Please speak to me. But I dare to tell you that 75%, all right, of our prayer life should be, way, should be praise and worship unto God. And fellowshipping with Him. And the other type of, you see, you see, Go with me, uh, <laughs> go with me to second, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I don't, I, well, okay, that's all right, I got all the time in the world, I'm not going to be in a hurry, I put myself under pressure here, but, all right, it's all right, first Timothy, chapter two, first Timothy chapter two, one says this, Therefore, I exhort, first of all, that all supplications, prayers, 1 Timothy 2, 1. 
Therefore, I exhort first of all that all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. Notice that there's just not one kind of prayer here. That that's normally what we have. The, the, the most common prayer there is in Christianity is, you know what it is? Help! <laughs> and there ain't nothing wrong with that, you know, when we done exhausted everything we knew to do. But God expects us to grow up and, and do everything you're expected to do. Because God works through all the different avenues. And we are, right, and part of our prayer life or, you know, it, it, it's just not all. When you, you fellowshipping with the Father is just part of the, our prayer life. The other part of our prayer life ought to be we speaking to the mountains and speaking the end desire results. Look what it says in Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. See, we, 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 we read these verses, but we read right over, and we don't know exactly, you know, the content. But notice what it says in verse 18. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Praying always with all prayer. What did that mean? Pray always with all the different types of prayer is what another version reads. I think it's the Amplify. You pray with all the different types of prayer. And one of the most effective types of prayer is us speaking to all those mountains in our lives. Now the question here is, when was the last time that you spoke to a mountain? When was the last time that you spoke to a tree? When was the last time that you spoke the end desire results to those things that have been coming against you and command that the desire results manifest? Go back with me to Mark chapter 11. Verse 23. Mark eleven twenty three 23 says, 22 says, Have faith in God or have the God kind of faith. For surely I say to you that whosoever shall say to this mountain, Be removed, be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things that he says will be done, he will have whatever, whatever, whatever he says. Whatever he says. This is not limited, folks. Whatever he says. But now you got to tie it up with believing in the heart. And that's how, that's how you got saved. You believe in the heart that Jesus was raised from the dead. And you confess Jesus as your Lord. And what took place? Salvation. So you're to believe in your heart that you're healed by the stripes. And healing will take place. Whether it's through a doctor, whether it's through medicine, or whether it's through the supernatural. We get confused sometimes. We think, it's, we think it's a sin if we got healed in the natural through a doctor. Can you imagine that? <laughs> Guess who provided the knowledge for you to be healed in the, in, in the natural? If not Almighty God. You believe in the heart. I was talking to Bishop about this earlier, that, you know, many times it's those small little things in our lives that get us. Go with me a minute to Job chapter, chapter 3. 
Job chapter 3. Job was right before Psalms. See, a lot of people have blamed God that God, God did Job bad. Well, look what God did to Job. Have you ever heard that? Those of you who have been in circles long enough. But that's not true. Look what, look what Job 3.23 says. Job 3.20 says, 25 says, For the things I greatly feared has come upon me, and what I dreaded has happened to me. And sometimes we're not still enough to keep our hearts in check because the same way that faith gives you what you, you desire, the same way that faith operates for good, fear also operates for bad. And fear opens the door to the devil in your life. And it's a spiritual force. And the Bible says, it says that a double-minded man can receive nothing of the Lord. You can be here proclaiming faith, but if in your heart you're still fearing, hey, listen, it won't work that way. And then you talk to God, well, God, what happened? Well, check your heart. Because the Bible says that if you believe in your heart and you confess through your mouth, you'll have those things that he has freely given to you in every area of your life. I can't tell you the times that, you know, some people think that just because you drive a Hummer and live in a big house, you don't have some needs, or you don't go through some trials. And there's been times that my, my grandkids have said, well, we want this, and the natural response is, we can't afford it, or I don't, I don't not have money. We do it all the time, don't we? Come on, go like this. Yeah, we do it all the time. But the truth is, I have learned to say, oops, sweetie, not at this time. And you govern the words that come out of your mouth. Go with me to James. Come on, we're going to wrap this up in just a few moments. Notice what it says. My brethren, verse, uh, James chapter 3, verse 1. And by the way, because we go from glory to glory, God wants you to keep believing. A lot of us, you know, we become content. And that's, there's nothing wrong in content. Contentment is happiness. But we stop hearing the voice of God, so we lived in this contentment, not knowing that God has more for us. And a lot of times you would say to yourself, well, I don't want more, but you know what? It's not just about you, buddy. You got a lot of people that you are supposed to be the role model that you're supposed to lead. You're supposed to be training. You're supposed to be teaching. And you may not be called to touch the thousands or the millions, but the person underneath that you're supposed to be training and teaching may be the one that's called to touch the thousands and the millions. And if you stop believing and if you stop stretching yourself, you're cheating them of what God is trying to do in their life through you. 
You need to hear that in the tape later on again. <laughs> it says, my brethren, let not many of you become teacher, <laughs> teachers, knowing that we shall receive a stricter judgment. Now, let me stop here a minute. Okay? Because I don't got much time, but Peter, James, and John, they didn't have the same revelations as Paul. So there's a lot of things that they said that we have to take in contents, okay, even though we're to learn from all of it, okay? But now, let's go. I'll come back another day and tell you about that. For we all stumble in many things. If anyone does not stumble in word, he is a perfect man, able also to bri- uh, he's, a, he's, a, he's a perfect man, able also to bridle the whole body. Indeed, we put bits in horses' mouth that they may obey us, and we turn their whole body. Look also at the ships, although they are so large and are driven by fierce wind, they are turned with a very small rudder wherever the pilot desires. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. See how great a forest fire, a little fire kindles. That means you may be talking unbelief and fear, and that thing eventually will become a fire against you. Okay? So don't tell me little words and little whispers and little things. Okay? They'll affect you. It says, and verse 6, And the tongue is a fire world of iniquity. And the tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire by hell. Man, that's big. For every kind of beast and birds, reptile, creature of the sea is tamed, but being tamed by mankind. But no one can tame the tongue. It is unruly and evil and full of the deadly poison. With it we bless our Father, our God and Father, and with it we curse man who is made in the uh, uh, the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceeds blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not be so. Now, James says that the tongue cannot be tamed. I say the tongue can be tamed by the power of the Holy Ghost and speaking in tongues. If you don't know what to say, speak in tongues. If you have nothing good to say, speak in tongues. What did you just say, Apostle Lewis? I don't know. <laughs> now, I could get interpretation if I wish. Okay? But when I'm praying this way, all right, it's just allowing God to move in my life. And if he needs to interrupt me and give me an interpretation, he will. Or he'll give me a prophetic word. But the tongue can be tamed. So, to wrap it up here, faith has been given to you as a servant so that you can use faith. Go with me. All right, go with me to Hebrews. I'm finished. I promise. This is it right here. Hebrews chapter, Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 1 says, Therefore, since a promise remains of entering into rest, let us fear lest any of you seem to have come short of it. In other words, there's a rest for God's people. And the reason there's a rest for God's people is because God has given us spiritual forces so that these spiritual forces could work f- 
for us. But most of us, when we get into a problem, what's the very first thing we want to do? We want to call fast. <laughs> and we, you know, we want to work at something. We got to do something. And we don't know that these, this, the, the power of joy, the power of peace, the power of praise, the power of joy, the power of love have been given to us so that they can work for us and for work for those around us so that we can rest. We can enter into the rest of the Lord. Go to Hebrews 3. I, I need to say something from there and come back this way. Maybe not. Hold on. Hebrews 4. Where is that thing? Hold on. Oh, there it is. Yeah. All right, we're, we're good. Hebrews 4.1, therefore, since a promise remains to enter the rest, let us, let us fear lest any of you come short of it. For indeed, the gospel was preached to us as well as to them, but the word which they heard it did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. For we who have believed, what, what does it say there? For we who have believed have entered into that rest as he has said so unbelief will keep you out of the rest of God and many times unbelief is ignorant ignorance and unbelief go hand in hand because if you don't know that God has these spiritual forces available for you to use every single day of your life it's as if you're in unbelief because what makes us a believer is hearing the word of God or hearing the knowledge of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the knowledge of God. So as you hear, you believe. If you don't hear, you don't believe. Ignorance makes us unbelievers. But God has made a way for us to enter into his wrath. He goes on to say there, he says, verse 3, for we have believed in, uh, for those, for we who have believed do enter into their rest. As he has says, so has sworn by my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he has spoken in a certain place seven days, got rested on the seventh day, all his works, verse 5, and again in that, in this place, they shall not enter my rest. Verse 6, since therefore it remains that some must enter in and those who, whom it was first preached did not enter in because of disobedience. Again, he designated a certain day saying in David today after such long time as it has been said today if you will hear his voice and do not harden the heart. Verse 11, let us therefore be diligent to enter into that, that rest. In other words, God expects us to practice these things we learn. The next time that you feel weak, It's there. Yes. I'm not faking it. It's there. This is a real yes. power right inside of us. Amen. All right. The next time that you fear fearful, you start to praise God. Yes. I, was, I remember I was telling Diane at the Bible study this week that uh, I, I have this habit of anointing my house and our properties. And some years ago, it was, I think, 3 o'clock in the morning. I was in my bathrobe and my, and my uh, slippers. Thank you. And I'm anointing my house, but I decided to go down to the property line of my house at 3 o'clock in the morning. 
So amara masitia rabasata rabasitia ura masata. And I'm not there. I pray and believe in God. And all of a sudden, I was under these trees. And all of a sudden, the, the branches and the trees shook it. Ah! <laughs> Ran for my life. <laughs> and when I was down here, I went, <sighs> thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. And I reached the end of the property, praising Jesus, knew that he will steal the powers of darkness all around me. There's power in that, man. There's power. But if you don't practice that thing, you won't take advantage of it. These are the different powers in our lives that we're to release every single day of our lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stand with me. Hallelujah. 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 Woo. Let me say this to you. The Bible is many things. It's a, it's a book of literature. It's a book of science. It's a book of doctrine. It's a prayer book. But it is also a book of prophecy. Every single one of us ought to be prophesying the future, our future through the word of God, through the promises of God. Instead of watching so much television, sometimes... You know, things happen to us and we go, oh, why? Why? What did I do? No, it's not what you did. It's what you didn't do. Right. Prophesy over our children. Prophesy over our grandchildren. Prophesy over our finances. Prophesy over every single area of our lives because there's power in those words. There's power in those words. There's power in those words. Because you just never know. I hugged, I hugged a man of God today. And when I hugged him, I told him, oh, man of God. And he says, I needed to hear that. Because we all need to hear the prophetic word. We need to hear those words of encouragement. Close your eyes. Lift up your hands. For he will do exceedingly far above, more abundantly, greater than, way over, than your highest prayers, your wildest imaginations, and your deepest desires, according to the power that is within you, according to the power of love, according to the power of joy, according to the power of praise, According to the power of grace, according to the power of faith, he will do exceedingly far above, more abundantly, greater than, way over than our highest prayers, our wildest imaginations, and our deepest desires, according to the power that is within you. Right now, raise your hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Father. I release those powers that you have placed within us, mighty God. I release in this very moment, Lord God, the power of peace, the power of joy, the power of love, the power of faith, the power of mercy. Father God, I release 
even now father god your power in your people lord god for your glory and for your honor lord god lord god that you will lord that they may be vessels lord god vessels supernatural vessels supernatural vessels supernatural vessels lord god supernatural vessels lord god walking in the supernatural every day mighty god We are believers. We are believers. We believe. We believe. We believe. We believe. We believe. We believe that there's power in our tongue. We believe that we live when we eat the fruit of our mouth. We believe, mighty God. Ora mashiti araboko raba Assyria makata araboko raba Syria. Arimokoto rabasata rabasiria akata raboto rabasata adato mosoto birioko biriama araka okori akara ayabata rimi morro boko toro basatiria. For have I not said, says the Lord, that I shall pour my spirit? Upon all flesh, that they may prophesy, says the Lord. Heaven, I say, says the Lord, that I will perfect my church. Heaven, I said that you will be conformed and transformed into the image of my Son. Heaven, I now proclaim my riches and my wealth and my health over my people. I have given you all wisdom. I have given you the mind of Christ. I have given you all the blessings from above. You are fully equipped, and I am taking you to maturity, says the Lord. I am taking you from glory to glory. I am taking you to the highest level. <coughs> I am restoring all things, says the Lord. Prophesy it, says the Lord. Prophesy it over your life. Prophesy it over your family. Prophesy it over your neighborhood. Prophesy it over your city. Prophesy it over the nations of the world. Prophesy it, says the Lord.
believer. I believe that I'm a son of God. I believe that I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. I believe that Christ greater in me than he's in the world. I believe there's power in my tongue. There's nothing that I can do by the grace of God. Even now, I am free. I am free. I am free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 